If you've ever heard of Joe Rogan, and what is he most famous for? I mean, he's got a big podcast. He also did a show where people were like eating spiders. This is not the guy you go for health advice to. Does anybody know that? He talks about doing drugs on the show like every episode. This is, <laughs> this is not your doctor. I think everybody would know that. And everyone knows, talk to your doctor if you have a real health concern. There's a lot of information out there. And it's, sometimes it's interesting to listen to and think about and hear. And you know, maybe it opens your mind to new possibilities to ask your doctor about. But you shouldn't just start ingesting things because you watched YouTube. Who does that? If you do that, you're dumb. Okay? Nobody's doing that. Ask your doctor if you have a legitimate health condition. And, and Rogan pointed out, he's not a doctor. I'm not a doctor, I'm not a scientist. I'm just a person who sits down and talks to people and has conversations with them. Do I get things wrong? Absolutely, I get things wrong, but I try to correct them. Whenever I get something wrong, I try to correct it because I'm interested in telling the truth. I'm interested in finding out what the truth is. And I'm interested in having interesting conversations with people that have differing opinions. Yes, and this is why Joe Rogan has been successful. He's, he's interviewed people all over the map from different areas of entertainment to sports to politics. He'll talk to anybody from any political bent. He'll talk to all sorts of people about all sorts of different things. And he's not a scientist. You should not go to Dr. Joe Rogan for your health advice, obviously. I mean, look, and part of the thing here is he mentioned he wants to do more research. Should you do research before doing an interview? Yeah, probably. You should probably have some idea where you're going with it, what are good questions to ask, of course. But a big part of his podcast in particular was that they were just hanging out, him and a bunch of comedians initially, and then he started talking to different people, and a lot of it came from, hey, I'm gonna start with my knowledge level right now and ask what might be, what some people might think are dumb questions. So what? A lot of people have them. And a lot of people ask questions that you know they, they wonder about certain things and they don't know, and Part of the reason Joe Rogan has been successful is particularly when you don't know something about the topic, he comes at it from your perspective. He's not coming at it from like an advanced, you know, uh, understanding of every issue. He comes at it from a regular guy perspective and asks questions. Let me give you an example of this. Very early on in the COVID-19 saga, I remember listening to a Joe Rogan interview. It was one of the first, you know, interviews I remember really listening to of um, of a you know a real virologist about what COVID could turn into. It was early March, I think, maybe of, of 2020. And he had Michael Osterholm on. Now, Michael Osterholm wound up being an advisor for Joe Biden, okay, for uh, his uh, for his expertise in the world of uh, uh, you know uh, the spread of viruses and such. He's gone on to be critical of Biden's response in some ways. Uh, but he has an advisor for Biden. This is not some right winger. And, you know, look, this, this is, I wanna give you an example of the type of questions he was asking Michael Osterholm at the beginning of this, watch. Let me ask you something about sauna use. One of the things that I read was that if you are in contact, that 20 minutes in a sauna, in a, a really hot sauna, is uh, very good for killing some of the virus. Is that bull Yes. So it doesn't have any impact at all? The, the idea was that the breathing in of the very hot air, 180 degree air for 20 minutes, will kill some of the virus. See, if that temperature of 180 degree air got really into your lungs, your lungs would be fried. You'd be dead. It would, the virus would have to be like just in your mouth or something like that. Even then, no? No, no. Wouldn't. Jesus, Michael. That's unfortunate. Because that, uh, that was exciting. Even if you're doing like some crazy deep breathing exercises where you slowly exhale all the air out so there's nothing left and then breathe it all the way in. I, my, I, I'm giving you my best shot at it. It's not going to make much difference. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> now, look, a lot of people read rumors like that at the beginning of COVID. And if you had real questions about that and you might have believed it, didn't Joe Rogan do a service there? He told people that might have believed some kind of crazy Internet idea that breathing in hot sauna air might cure COVID. And he had an expert on who explained it. And that may have helped people understand the virus a little bit better. In fact, the whole interview was very interesting. Some of the questions were really, you know, based on real uh, deep science. Some of it was more sauna questions. But is that so bad? You know, I mean, I, I, he cam comes at it from a perspective of asking honest questions from a person that doesn't always fully understand the topic. That's okay. That's totally fine. But because he's been somewhat, I don't even think completely, but somewhat skeptical 
on the COVID situation. He talked about uh, he was almost vaccinated at one point. I know he said he was going to get vaccinated for some MMA event, and then he wound up not getting it and getting COVID a little bit later on. And because he's taken some of the more alternative treatments, he's gotten in the news and, and is now painted as this unbelievable right wing conspiracy nut. This is bonkers. If you know anything about Joe Rogan, Joe Ro Bernie Sanders campaign made an ad about Joe Rogan endorsing Bernie Sanders. It's currently still on their YouTube page. The ad they crafted of an interview that Bernie did um, with uh, Joe Rogan. In fact, that one is a clip he talked about later where he said he was going to vote for Bernie in the primary. He was a Bernie guy. Bernie, for Bernie Sanders. And, you know, look, Joe Rogan is a lot of things, but and he might be against the mainstream media on some issues, but he's not a conservative by any means. He certainly, I don't think, would describe himself that way. And, you know, you look at, for example, the Bernie Sanders interview in particular, uh, it shows a couple things that he is. He's always been a guy who has been sort of skeptical of maybe what you would call mainstream medicine or big pharmaceutical companies or whatever. And like, that's fine. A lot of people are that way. That doesn't mean you get rid of a podcaster because he's saying those types of opinions. Let me give you an example of this, though. This is from his interview with Bernie Sanders. Besides the guns. The gun manufacturers, right, I'm sorry. Right. B besides the guns and the gun manufacturers, the other gigantic issue is mental health. Yeah. The only way any of this ever happens is someone has to be insanely mentally depraved. That's the only way. Talking about and many mass of them shootings are medicated. And many of them are on pharmaceutical drugs, and they have been since they were children, including amphetamines like Adderall and Prozac and all this different stuff that has varied effects on the human brain. What could be done and what would you done to analyze this, to find out what the cause and effect are, and to try to figure out what, res what role and how much these drugs are responsible? Okay, so he's, you know, kind of like, and a lot of people believe this, you know. But he's talking about how, um, you, know, you know, drugs that, you know, are designed for depression or whatever, attention deficit disorder might cause mass shootings. He went on to talk a lot about uh, guns and uh, some of the restrictions that Bernie Sanders wants to put on them, not always disparagingly by any means. He also went on to talk about uh, uh, taxes. And, and I mean, look, this guy, the guy I'm about to show you is being painted as a conservative right now. Watch. How many Americans actually believe that we should give tax breaks to billionaires and cut Social Security, Medicare, and Medicaid? Very few. That is, talk to Mitch McConnell. Get Mitch on the show. That is exactly what he believes. But that's ridiculous, right? And it seems that if you just took away those tax breaks, the enormous amount of money that would come from those <laughs> corporations having to pay their fair share would take care of a lot of the expenses of all these things that you're proposing. Exactly. I mean, that is a dream interview for Bernie Sanders. Hey, what if we raise taxes on the rich? Would it pay for all the stuff? Yes. <laughs> At one point, he's shaking his head so hard, I think it's going to pop off. He's so excited someone's presenting the information that way. Look, Joe Rogan's no conservative. The guy, you know, you, vote, you want to vote for Bernie Sanders, you can vote for Bernie Sanders. There's nothing wrong with that. And there's nothing wrong with someone being a liberal and having liberal opinions. They shouldn't be kicked off of a podcasting platform. You know, if you're the type of person who is thinking like, I don't, I don't want my music, my podcast hosted on the same platform as someone else with a different opinion, you're the weirdo. Like, you're the problem here. Not Joe Rogan, you. You're the problem. That's just a weird, psychotic thing. Look at, the New York Times has conservative and liberal columnists. Kind of. You have, uh, you know, uh, all these m newspapers and their editorial sections were designed to have both views in, in, at many, at least at some points, not, not always. But that used to be the way we did things, right? You'd have people who were, you'd be friends. They would talk together. They would be, you'd be able to have both opinions. Now we have to throw people off because they believe this? And a lot of this happens to come down to just weird teams. Like Joe Rogan, when he was pitching Bernie Sanders, I don't think was uh, people weren't cheering him on on the conservative side for that. But now they like his opinion on COVID, so all of a sudden he's a hero. Bill Maher was always an enemy. He was the worst li crazy liberal person. Now he's a superhero. Let me give you another example. This is from um, CNN This Weekend. This is a clip of uh, the Brian Stelter uh, experience. 
which I believe he's calling it now, uh, with Kat Rosenfield. And this made the, the, uh, the circles of conservative media this weekend. And, and l- let me show it to you, watch. Kat, you wrote on Twitter about Spotify. You went viral for a comment about it yesterday. Tell us your point of view first about this Spotify mess, because it's really dominated the week. Yeah, you know, what I think is interesting about the backlash against Spotify vis-a-vis Joe Rogan is that, um, you know, people are fundamentally angry about not being able to stop his audience from wanting news that is bad for them, uh, you know, wanting something that's bad for them. So, you know, we're all haunted by the specter of this guy who's listening to Joe Rogan and internalizing this bad information and making bad choices as a result. But Rogan is like a weed that sprang up outside the mainstream media ecosystem and he thrived there and he has this huge audience. And that's what's really scary, that Spotify could kick him off tomorrow and it wouldn't make a dent. It wouldn't make a dent in his audience. People would still listen to him. And crucially, they still wouldn't trust more mainstream media sources. And I think that's what's really, really frightening to people. A lot of conservatives saw that and said, oh, my gosh, well, we are haunted by the specter of, you know, this person who's getting wrong information from from Joe Rogan. Well, I mean, if Kat Rosenfield is, is like a libertarian, she is, I assure you, not opposed to free speech. She's not the enemy here by any means. In fact, in the same interview, she's arguing that you shouldn't cancel Joe Rogan. Watch. Providing as much information as possible is, you know, in the hopes that it will eventually get to the people who need it, providing as much good information as possible is probably a better bet than trying to, you know, shut down somebody who's already got a massive popular platform, um, you know, from reaching the people who are going to seek him out no matter what. Yeah, it's just bizarre here. We get in these weird team moments where everyone just wants to attack the moment, the person who's in front of them at that moment, whoever happens to make the viral rounds. This is a person who is absolutely on your side when it comes to censorship, Should, does not want people censored. The, but it doesn't seem to matter to anybody anymore. The truth here is that Joe Rogan should be able to do his freaking show and say whatever the hell he wants. He shouldn't have dumb links below him. He shouldn't have disclaimers he needs to make. He shouldn't have to bring on both sides of every issue. That just makes for a boring show. There is plenty of ways for you to access the information that is out there. You know that. We all know that. But the point here is that the left doesn't want you to be able to access that information. They want to be able to to put up a wall so that you can't make up your own mind. Even if you make a dumb decision, this is America. We were built on dumb decisions.